Hello, everyone. It's Thursday, August 16th, 2018. <clears throat> Today, I want to talk about one of my favorite combinations to see in a birth chart, and that would be the combination of Mars and Jupiter. Mars conjunct Jupiter, or Mars even in the same sign of, of Jupiter. Best if nothing else is there. Other planets can be there and not necessarily be messing it up, though. But if you just have a classic Mars-Jupiter conjunction, that's a really great placement. One thing that that is a great placement for is wealth and getting money. And the old books of India definitely note that Mars-Jupiter conjunctions give wealth. Um, another thing that I like about that placement, though, is that it gives you, it makes you really just productive in accomplishing your goals, and it makes one take very good actions and decisive action when they need to. And they just tend to build up a more productive and successful life, I've noticed. Um, why would that be? Well, I'm here to explain. So uh, Mars, his friend, Jupiter is one of his friends. He's only got two others. So Jupiter is a friend of Mars. Mars is a friend of Jupiter. So in the Lajitati of Ashtas of Jyotish, Vedic astrology, every planet has a friend, enemy, and neutrals to it. And they're just like human beings. And these relationships aren't always a two-way street. They can be one-sided. Just like how in real life, I can dislike someone who else who happens to like me, you know? Um, so the right off the bat, there's only a few times. For some reason, I just feel like, I don't know, something about this angle is, is annoying me. Um, that's better. I feel like I can sit back and you can see me. So uh, there is, yeah, one of the few times that you can get the friends, like a conjunction of mutual friends, it's not that often. Mercury and Venus can be conjunct, and they're both mutual friends to each other, so that's good. Jupiter and Mars can be like that. All the other times when it's like that, there's a little bit of some other rule interfering or something that can kind of get in the way and can kind of make it also a little bit of a difficult thing. For example, like Venus and Saturn are both friends, but if Venus and Saturn are conjunct, well, Saturn actually stars Venus. So it's not a universally good thing. It's not a win-win in all directions. But the Jupiter and Mars is essentially like a win-win in all directions. The only way that it's not good is that from another standpoint, the deep toddy of Ashtas, anytime a planet's with a cruel planet, it's vikala or impaired. So Jupiter is, in a sense, being impaired by Mars in this combination. But that one thing is, doesn't seem to be enough to, to cancel out a lot of the good that this combination brings. Another reason, another way we can kind of think of why this combination is bringing good, because in general, Mars is a cruel planet. So Mars with anything should be bad. And you might think, oh, Mars is with Jupiter. Well, that's going to take down Jupiter. So on some level, maybe that's true with the impairment. I actually think that that's true when it comes to health. Uh, like, so if we're looking in the context of health in the D30 chart or the Trimsamsha, uh, Jupiter representing things like, you know, Jupiter can represent the liver. Um, he can represent the brain. Um, he can represent the endocrine system just as a whole. Um, but even within other systems, he will represent things like in the digestive system, Jupiter represents the stomach, the space, the sky, the, the ether of your food, which just big bag that holds all your food in there the space um, required to digest healthily. So those, there could be issues there if Mars and Jupiter are conjunct in the D30 or something. Um, but really, again, in general, that's like stretching, you know? So there, there's a lot of good that this combination brings. And here's how I like to think of it. This is my own way of thinking of it. Um, my teachers have given me other examples and stuff. Um, and you can go and find those if you want. But so, so I really like to think of it as this um, wood. You know, wood is related to, in Chinese medicine, the, the element of sky or ether of Jupiter is related to wood. And wood represents like that because it expands. You know, a little tiny seedling can become a great massive oak tree. So Jupiter is related to the wood element. And Mars is, of course, related to the fire element in Chinese and Western and Indian and every, every system ever. Um, so what does fire need? Fire needs wood to burn. You see, so fire needs 
sky or ether or space or an energy source to burn from. And so Jupiter is like the direction or the energy or the um, that which encases things and contains the energy which Mars will need to rely upon to act, you know, to burn. And so they're just so perfect for each other. So uh, Mars people are really fiery, hot-natured persons, so they need that cooling guidance. They need the cooling pranayama, the the uplifting sattvic influence of Jupiter to do the best with their willpower, to do the best with that fire in their action. Um, uncontrolled fire is a bad thing. It's incredibly dangerous. But fire that's controlled in a properly built fire with wood, you know, the direction, the guidance of Jupiter makes that fire auspicious and it makes that fire warm your whole house, you know, if you have a, a fireplace. Um, or if you need food, you know, so that proper direction of the fire, cooking it in a certain way under a certain pot, which warms up your food, makes those nutrients uh, digestible and acceptable to your body. So that's sort of how Jupiter and Mars are working. And, you know, Jupiter, well, he's a little bit kappa. He's a little bit slow and heavy, and he has all this wisdom and knowledge, but innately he doesn't really want to go do anything with it so mars is helpful for that because mars helps the person jupiter get up and talk and teach or get up and you know go and and put that goodness into the world somewhere so that uh when mars and jupiter are conjunct if it's in the context of a guru you'll notice they're like a more productive guru who's writing a lot of books or doing a lot of things and not necessarily just like absorbed in the ethers all the time all right so let me give you guys some examples um, go. All right, so I hope you guys can see that screen that I've got pulled up here. Um, I've got a chart of JP Morgan. So he was a huge financial juggernaut, we could say, um, of the, you know, the time when America was kind of, you know, building up and he was a major heavyweight involved in, you know, just all those business tycoons back in the day, the Federal Reserve, all this stuff. Sorry, my throat got really dry. I need to buy a watermelon. All right, so note that Jupiter is with Mars and Jupiter is his ruling planet. And it's in the sixth house of death. So when you have uh, good dignity plants in the sixth house, you're really good at managing debt, aka you don't get in debt, aka means you get super, super rich. Um, and again, that's Mars is ruling the second house for him, you know, Aries. Jupiter's ruling the 10th and the 9th house. Um, or wait, sorry, 10th house and 9th house. But either way, for Pisces, Jupiter, Mars conjunctions makes a Raja Yoga. I was just going to, that's all I really wanted to say about that. So he's very, like, you know, has that Raja Yoga, that inspiration to follow his purpose to build a kingdom and an empire because it's in Leo. Um, now, I don't really think he was a super ethical person necessarily. Uh, and, but that one combination is a good placement for ethics, but there can be other placements that can make you not so into ethics um, or necessarily need feeling like you need to do the right thing or anything. But we know that J.P. Morgan, he was one of the wealthiest people in the country. Um, he was very, he was pretty wise though. Like he would say things like, you know, uh, gold is real money, everything else is credit. So that shows that he had a deep understanding of what real wealth was, the Jupiter there with appreciating gold and, um, you know, not gonna fall for notes that had no meaning to him essentially. And he also had a great quote where he was known for saying, uh, millionaires don't use astrology, billionaires do, because he was actually someone who was very big into astrology. But of course, a ton of people were back then, even presidents were um, back then. So anyways, that's, uh, that's J.P. Morgan's chart. I don't want to go to it too heavily in depth with technical things um, in this video. So that's it for him. Here's another chart of... Roy Eugene Davis. This is uh, uh, the last living disciple of Paramahansa Yogananda. 
and uh, Paramahansa Yogananda is one of the greatest yogis of modern times. Um, he's considered to be spiritually perfect uh, by most, most people um, who would have the authority to say that. Um, and so this is a disciple of his. He was just a young farm boy born in 1931. Um, and he, I think he got sick and he somehow found a book on wellness and health and they had a book, an advertisement for this book, Autobiography of a Yogi in this magazine. He ordered it right away. He read the book and just started healing from reading it almost. And he just knew that this was to be his guru, went to LA as soon as he could get the money to and basically has been a, you know, a direct disciple of Yogananda ever since and has you know, gotten to a pretty good degree of self-realization himself. Uh, he runs his own retreat center in Northeast Georgia called Center for Spiritual Awareness. Uh, he's written a huge amount of books. He's taught all over the world and he's you know, maintained a great yoga practice, Kriya Yoga practice for over 50 years, teaching people, writing books. Um, he's brought a lot of goodness into the world, and you can see that because his Mars ruling planet is debilitated in Cancer, but it's strongly delighted by that exalted Jupiter. So he himself maybe wasn't a great being by any by his own merit, but he had the merit to find a great guru and to receive the delight of that guru and stick to it. And that's uh, it's pretty much just that simple. You know, he just stuck to it. So here's an example of someone who had fire, maybe not a lot of fire to burn, but had a great fire built for him and a great encasing in the wood and great guidance of that fire. So he's made a great life for himself and definitely has never had to worry about money ever for his entire life. And all he's focused on was God and spirituality. Um, and he is very big. Like what he will tell people is he's like, I never have met a person in all of my years and all 50 years of teaching yoga who had a great, who truly had a great degree of spiritual awareness that he could sense. And that wasn't in a constant flow of resources and, you know, wealth and money and things that they needed. So his whole kind of philosophy is built on if you're really self-realized, you'll be a part of universal mind. And that universal mind is responsive to your needs and desires. And so it will always take care of you. And so you will never be out of a flow of continuous, you know, resources. And that's been true for him. Um, I think he was in the military for a short time during the 50s or 60s at some point. And then ever since then, he's just taught and ran an ashram based on donations and uh, he owns his own printing press and he prints books, but they're ridiculously cheap. I would definitely advise getting his books if you want books on yoga. Um, yeah, so it's just, this is another good example of a Jupiter-Mars combination really being great. And, you know, his Mercury is debilitated. Um, the moon is uh, not really in a great dignity here on the Ascendant. So he has like an amazing chart. He's got a strong Saturn. He's got things that are good enough, you know, but... Uh, I think that Jupiter is obviously a, a big part of what was saving the day for him in his chart. Now we have the chart of Joseph Campbell, very great mythology, uh, what, no, uh, mythologist. Um, I don't know what you call it, but a uh, real expert on mythology and ancient cultures, very learned, wise figure, um, Harvard graduate, these sort of things. Very, very well known. He has Jupiter and Mars conjunct. But he does have Mercury here starving um, that Mars and Jupiter. This is very interesting because, you know, he has, he's had his own interviews, the Power of Myth documentary series with Bill Moyers. He was interviewed. He's pretty much the expert on all myths compared to mythology. Uh, if you're going to get into mythology, you, you must certainly know about this person. Um, but what's interesting is that he's so spiritual and so into all this stuff, but he's even admitted in, in interviews where this interview with Bill Moyers, he's saying, you know, I know that I don't have the degree of realization that I would have had if I had stuck to one path and just gone deep into that. Like he had met people who had done that. He met a guy at Shark Cathedral who lived the most like renounced life whatsoever. He like lived inside the temple and just in this little room hidden away and just served in the temple the entire time. Um, 
you know, he, he, he knew that that person had a greater degree of realization than he would ever achieve in this life. But he knew like every religion, every myth, every culture, you're talking about Shinto beliefs, you talk about shamanism, there wasn't a thing you could, you know, oh, what, you think, you know, Hinduism, he'll be like, oh, no, 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 King Wichikunda went through the same exact ordeal in the, in the stream of Bhagavad Gita, blah, 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 he like knows it all, you know, um, but he doesn't have the full inner experience that say a true one pointed devotee of God has, but he was able to perceive that and understand that. So it shows how perceptive he was. Uh, Mars being his Atmakarika, this is also like his own self sign of his body too, from the Jaimini angle. But that Mercury starving Mars is definitely relatable to why he wasn't interested in going directly down one path till he got to the goal. Um, he was more interested in take like the, the whole wide array of options um, and being more intellectual, more intellectual pursuits. As, in, as another way to compare, Yogananda had Jupiter and Mars and Aries up here without Mercury starving and Yogananda went all the way. Um, I wonder why I didn't think to use his chart in the, when I was giving these examples. That's funny. Well, everyone knows his chart, so you can go and look at that if you like. This is a chart of just a, a friend of mine. Um, he's not famous or anything, but he has is uh, Mer he has Mars and Jupiter conjunct in the second, and he's uh, done a lot better with wealth than just the average person. And he's more of a spiritual person, doesn't care about money, but he's always been able to get be in a flow of resources, like I was saying about Roy Eugene Davis. And he has a good degree of spiritual awareness, and that spiritual awareness seems to help him attract good wealth and more resources. And uh, he works in a kitchen and that makes sense too. He works for a restaurant and, you know, he's a Taurus, you know, it deals with food and luxury, Mars and Jupiter in the second house of food. So he makes money through being a chef and food and things like that. So you can kind of see that connection there. Um, but yeah, he's a really lucky person and he seems to attract uh, jobs and things that support him and pay him well. That's the thing you'll notice when Jupiter Mars conjunctions are in a chart, you will get paid well for the job that you take. Uh, if everyone else, you know, if everything else was even in a chart, the person who has the Jupiter Mars conjunction versus the other person that that conjunction will make them get a job that pays them a little bit more and just acquire, gives them a little bit more because it's like a good self-esteem placement, especially if it's in the second house of self-esteem. Um, so that's just something to consider and think about. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much, uh, you know, all I wanted to share here, just some simple explanations of Jupiter, Mars. When you see that combination, usually the person will be hardworking and will work uh, in wise practical ways they'll work smarter not harder necessarily they will attract better paying jobs for them and there's usually like they're very good at just solving problems in a lot they want to use their mars in a wise way so they're just good at their productive person that makes them more successful in life that's what we really want so all right hope you guys enjoy these videos this is a good placement to have